I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's not normal. Hey guys, welcome back to Local Coma and our first official episode of Fractured Frontiers, which is going to be where I handle boundary breaks and glitches in various games. For our first episode, I'll be doing Destiny 2's Nessus today, but I wanted to start the series by talking to you guys a little bit about why I have an interest in doing this, and especially why I enjoy doing this in Bungie's games. So, here we go. If you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of video games. I remember being able to go to any arcade and play X-Men or The Simpsons game, and quickly have complete strangers become friends, as we fought together and bonded over something so seemingly simple. I remember games bringing my friends together to experience new and exciting things, such as the original Pokémon letting us battle via Link Cable, no matter where we were. Speaking of Lynx, my parents got me Lynx Awakening that same year, which kicked off a lifelong addiction to all things Legend of Zelda. Nintendo's games dominated my childhood after that, and as the 90s progressed and the Nintendo 64 came out, I was in awe of the progress gaming had made. The console not only brought my friends together, but even my parents got in on it. And it was great! Fast forward a few years, and I'm standing in my local game store when I see another kid who's excitedly checking out a demo kiosk for the new Microsoft system, the Xbox. I don't know much about the console, after all it wasn't made by Nintendo or Sony, and if I wanted to play anything else I had access to a PC. But they have a copy of some new shooter game in it, and he and I team up to see how far we could go. It was fun. I felt like I was in the arcade again, but the game was so much more involved. And then, we were terrified. The game we had just started to understand introduced us to The Flood. We died over and over again, not knowing what was happening. I had never seen an enemy like that. I probably only played that game for 20 or 30 minutes, but it made a big impression on me. Bungie made me love Halo. They were my only reason for ever owning a Microsoft system, and later for shifting back to Sony. There were other fantastic games on there, but Halo is what always brought me back. Even the worst Halo games still had enough substance for me to get something out of them, because each iteration had a new and exciting feature. The multiplayer brought my friends together in ways not even the Nintendo 64 had, and that's an impressive thing for a console that introduced Super Smash Bros. I think in part this was because of the co-op in the campaigns, but there was also something magical about linking multiple systems together to hold massive team battles. It was something I had seen on PC, and even on Nintendo's Game Boy, but most home consoles didn't do that yet. As happens with any new technology, flaws will be found. There were certain barriers which clearly Bungie didn't mean to have exploited, and others they did, but they all amounted to the same thing opportunities to explore. Bungie fill their games with so much detail, a lot of us can't help but to hunt for the hidden areas. We want to see more. The level skipping parts of Halo 2 maybe inspired me a bit too much, but when Bungie left Microsoft, I followed them, and continued to look for similar exploits and hidden adventures in the Destiny series. You can find glitches and barrier breaks in Nintendo releases, and I occasionally enjoy watching them here on YouTube, but they're mostly just mistakes or poorly executed code. I only care to test the limits of Bungie's titles, because with all the hidden puzzles they have in their games, they feel less like a flaw or a game-breaking error to me than they do an invitation to come find them. I'm exploring their world, and these are just part of it. I love seeing how everything is pieced together and finding new ways to sneak around and look at the details. Plus, with the fast travel points in Destiny, I'm not worried about getting trapped if I step into the wrong spot. I won't corrupt my save file. I know, it's just a game, just a glitch in the system, and Bungie doesn't really put all of the errors I'm exploiting into the game to be found. Maybe they mismanaged a skybox, and didn't even notice that gap in the rocks. Maybe they were just sloppy and someone didn't do their job right. That's okay, at least to me. 
Whether they mean it or not, I still love it, imperfections and all, because it feels familiar. I still hate actual game-breaking bugs and genuinely bad glitches, but I don't view these the same. These are building blocks. I'm getting to appreciate the art that makes up the game. It brings me back to level skipping with my friends. It brings me back to my childhood, when games were far from perfect but captured our attention, and in a weird way, it feels like I'm being welcomed home. I don't need Bungie's games to be totally polished or perfect, I just want to enjoy a game with my friends, and Bungie makes that possible. That's why I like to break their games, so to speak. I love to run around and see what they did, how they made the game, and what interesting things I can find hidden throughout their worlds. Anyway though, that's what started my interest in doing this series. Right now, I am mostly focusing on Bungie's games, specifically Destiny 2 at the moment, but I do plan on eventually incorporating other games into the series, and I hope that as this goes along, you guys will stay with me. And I'm also open to suggestions on any games you would like to see me do this series with. So if there's something specific you want to see, go ahead and comment in the section down below and let me know. All right, so just to clarify real quick, I don't actually do anything to the code of the game. I don't hack. I don't do anything that could cause any kind of damage. I'm literally just walking around the map and whatever happens, happens. So obviously that first part that I was in when I started the video was Artifact's Edge. I just happened to luck out and found a weird glitch that shot me crazy high in the air, and that's what got me over to that far ledge. It is possible to get there without that glitch, but it's extremely difficult. One of my other friends, Matt, actually managed to get over there, but it probably took like 30 or 40 minutes for him to get over there with me. And once we were over there, there wasn't really much to do other than take a few pictures and see if we could maybe replicate it again. I'm going to be jumping around a bit when it comes to the places that I show you. Like right now, we're over in Watcher's Grave. I tried to collect the most interesting places in this video, at least the ones that were the most interesting to me, so far as boundary breaks and that sort of thing. But there were so many different things that I found that I actually had to cut back the footage from about three hours. So I'm hoping by the time I'm done producing this that it's only going to be sitting somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes. And ideally in the future, I don't think I want to have the episodes run that long anyway. The sweet spot for me is probably going to be 10, 15 minutes. That way you guys don't get too bored with it and I don't spend ages just trying to make an episode. But anyway though, there's a lot of stuff that you can do in Watcher's Grave. It's pretty cool because you can actually get almost all the way to the top of the map in this area. And when you do, you can actually see some of the areas that are either not normally accessible or are part of maybe, I think, a mission or two that are pre-rendered in the background that normally you wouldn't be able to because they're obstructed by buildings or walls or any number of different obstacles. Also, a little bit further in, you can see what I believe is actually part of one of the earlier missions on Nessus that's pre-rendered, but it's just sort of hidden off to the side for whenever they need it. So I thought that was pretty neat. We'll get there in a little bit, though, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about with that area. One of the most impressive things to me as I've been going through and doing this is just how solid most of the background work is. A lot of the settings, a lot of the filler images are actually fully rendered. It's not just a invisible wall or some sort of fluff piece. You can walk on it, under it, you can go all around this. It is a built-in part of the map. Even though it's not something that you're normally supposed to be seeing or doing, there's an incredible amount of work that went into building this map. Something I'm not used to with a shooter game, but Bungie has sort of flipped on its head because of the fact that Destiny is essentially an MMO, is everything is rendered all the time. There's occasional loading, but for the most part, everything is always here. Even if it's not in an area that you're using, simply because of the scale of the map and the number of people who play the game, they have to have everything rendered. They do a great job of making sure that everything is going to be solid and everything is a usable asset. Even if it's not something that you expect to see getting used immediately. Also, like in this area I'm walking around in right now, because they make the hills and structures so deep below the regularly playable area, 
it just about guarantees that you're not going to see any kind of visual flaws. There's not going to be a gap or anything like that that you'll see when you're trying to play the game. And it's almost easy to forget that I'm not running around in the playable area right now because of the amount of work that they put into this. It's also a little bit trippy, like you just saw the guy on his sparrow who went over my head. And because of the way the game is built up, it should show him that I'm like right below his feet. So I may be confusing a couple of people while I'm doing this. Okay, so now we're coming up on that spot that I was talking about earlier. I'm pretty sure that's from a mission towards the start of Destiny 2, but I don't remember exactly what it was. It's really neat, though, to see that it's actually pre-rendered and everything down there at the bottom of the map. If anyone remembers what that is, would you let me know? Something else I love is that with all the other details they put in here, they fully render the ships. The one that just shot over my head, there's no reason why they couldn't have found a way to cheat and just make a hollow 3D image from above, since normally they're not expecting people to even be up here. But Bungie actually bothers to fully render their ships, so you can see the top, you can see the bottom, you can see the sides. There are very few times where they don't make something complete. And that says a lot about the kind of work that they put into building their worlds, and how dedicated they are, at least in my opinion, to making sure that the game world is fully immersive for the people who are playing it. They don't have to have flybys, they don't have to have any of these things, and it feels like a really nice touch to me, and it's just another reason why I love the work that Bungie puts into their games and why I enjoy doing what I'm doing right now. So this last place that I'm taking us to is over by the Inverted Spire. It's actually my favorite part of the game to go into, just because I love all the detail in like the grass areas. It's just a lot of flat red, but it's a really nice look. Unfortunately, over here, you can't really go much further because, well, that happens. But what you can do is if you go over to the anchor and head towards the actual inverted spire area, you can get past this border and take a look at the hallway, because it's really hard to actually appreciate this area for what it is when you're having to fight off everything. Like, the stonework is great, it's almost got a moldy look to it in a few places. I never noticed that there were actually birds flying by in here, and you don't really pay attention to the foliage or the lighting, you can actually climb that back wall if you want to, but it takes a crazy amount of time to do it just because it's already so dark back there, and there are very few actual footholds. I haven't actually been able to get past this part on the map just because there's so many barriers. They've completely closed off the main entrance to the strike. So if we head back outside, we can actually climb the walls to just about the top of the map out here, and can basically see all of the playable area from up here and get to see the waterfall, and all the clouds, and smoke coming up from that. And then when we turn around, we have a full red sea of grass again. Except this one is fully rendered, there's no kill boxes. There are some parts that you can't actually get to because they went ahead and they put in some sky boxes that'll block you in. But otherwise, it's just a really big, beautiful red field, and you can do whatever you want up here. So if we go to the very back here, we're actually going to be overlooking that hall that we were just in. This is the highest point I've been able to get to on that. There are some more skyboxes off to the side, so I can't really jump across that I can tell. Which is a shame, because I'd like to actually see more of the other side of the cliff. But if we go ahead and jump down here, it'll actually render in for us. And apparently kill us. And then we end up stuck down here again, because there's not really a good way to climb out of here. So you're basically left with having to bring yourself back to an original spawn point or something. So guys, those were some of my favorite discoveries in the Nessus map. Like I said earlier, I'm planning on doing this as a full series. What other games would you like to see me try to explore like this? I may just go from planet to planet and try to find all of the different areas like this. I have more footage from Titan and also from the Ace of Spades quest that I'm going to be uploading for a couple of episodes in the next few weeks. Let me know down below, what would you like to see me do with this series? Did you enjoy this episode? What could I do to make it better in your opinion? Shoot me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you later. You're not gonna die on the planet, guy. I'm not? What's my last name? It's, uh, um, uh... Guardian down.